hi guys welcome back to my channel it's ayana if you're new here i hope you subscribe and stay if you're not new hey girl hey thank you so much for watching i know it's been a while but today i'm back with another mukbang y'all i know it's been a while since i did this but i had a couple people request it and i've been watching some really good stories i just I've not felt like recording, but anyway, this story is crazy, y'all. So, oh yeah, I got wings here, and I have some um, bacon wrapped jalapenos, cheese jalapeno poppers, and then I got me a little strawberry Hennessy daiquiri that I made myself. Y'all, it's so good. I'm kind of drunk, so if I be sounding a little crazy, it's because I'm a little lit because I've been drinking for real. But anyway, this story is from my man, of course. The story starts with um, this girl. Her name I'm call her Kayla. She's a, a single mom of three. She's in the veterinary, veterinary school for, um, you know, vet tech or whatever to take care of animals. So, um, ooh, so good. They describe her as, you know, your typical single mom of three, struggling, trying to make a better life for herself and her kids. So, for sure, one day, going to school, she's catching the bus, trying to catch the bus but she running late so she's rushing on her way to the bus stop she drops her books and out of nowhere this supposed knight in shining armor you know like they do in the movies pops up like oh let me help you with that so he helps her with her books he likes what he sees see she determined to have a better life ask her out or whatever so they go out they kick it they like each other's vibe they end up dating he finds out that she has three kids. I guess he has custody of two kids of his own. I don't know if he has custody, but he has two kids of his own. This is so good. I make the best wings ever. Um, but after a few weeks of dating, they hit it off, you know. They fall in deep in love with each other. They end up moving in together, her kids and his kids. This is why, <clears throat> why I assumed. He had custody because his kids moved in with them. His name is, I'm going to call him Daniel. Daniel was a chef. Kayla thinks she found a man in her dreams. He shows her a lot of love and affection. And you know, all the, all the love that she never had, it says in the story. I guess she must have had a hard time with men. She has three kids, so. If they're not together, something must have went wrong. Um. I guess she had a past like that was hard with me and so she thought she thought Daniel was the love of her life. They both had kids, they both had careers or trying to have careers. And um, he just was showing her all type of love that she wasn't used to. So at first things are good. But as the months go on while they're living together. I'm sorry y'all, this is good. As the months go on that they're living together, Daniel starts changing. One day she walks in on the bathroom with Daniel girl. Tell me why she walking in on the bathroom, Daniel, with a crack pipe. What? Mind you, she's 23 years old. I think he's two, about 27. Not that there's an age limit for that, but still. So she confronts him about it like, what are you doing? What is that? She does not do drugs. He blows it off like it's not that serious. It's nothing. Why he's continuously smoking crack. <laughs> y'all y'all know she let this ride she just went back out there with the kids like nothing happened so you know as time goes on at first he must have thought he could handle it without getting addicted like most people he ends up getting addicted Daniel loses his job you know that's the first sign of shit when you can't keep employment you can't keep your daily routines up you're an addict you're a crackhead um, he loses his job and it becomes violent like he's just not the sweet person that she fell in love with so time goes on he starts kicking her ass you know when he's mad cause he ain't got no money for the pipe or whatever starts beating her up mind you she has three kids living in that house of her own including his two so one day she decides after losing his job like okay something has to be done I would have left I ain't being with no crackhead, but that's just me. But anyway, she, he, I guess he had a pile of money somewhere that he hid, like to buy his drugs, maybe money he had saved up for future plans or whatever, but he got addicted. So she hid the money from him. He comes home one day looking for the money. It's not there. 
he starts beating her ass because he knows she knows where it's at. She hid it from him. He kicks her ass so hard until she just like, here, here. She throws the money at him. Like, here, just take it because he was probably going to kill her. So, of course, he leaves to go get his little drugs or whatever. I guess that's a typical day in a household besides the money being missing her getting beat up. Another day go by. Same shit. He'll be angry, irritated. Let's see, I got drugs or whatever. So then they show this guy named, I'm going to call him, just call him B because I watched this video a while ago and then they end up changing the names in the story. So something must be going on with the case. So I'm going to just call him D. This guy named D is a friend of Daniel's and uh, Kayla. I guess he was going over to D's house to make some sort of transaction with him. I think he sold weed or maybe he sold crack. I don't know. Sold dope or something. Uh -uh. D is up texting one of his friends randomly like, hey, I'm going to go over to Daniel's house. If something happens to me, this is where I'm at. You know, sending a text like that, that's scary. Like, what do you mean? Because if you're scared, you should not go. So the friend that he texts, I'm going to just call him Jason or something. They never said his name. The friend sends a screenshot to the text of the text to Dean's dad, which he should have because I would be concerned too. Like, what do you mean? Where, where are you going? Why are you going over there if you're scared? So Dean's dad immediately, he knows Daniel and Kayla because they're all friends with each other or were friends or whatever. He immediately goes to this house to look for his son. Oh, I didn't mention his son is in a wheelchair, y'all. He's a wheelchair bound. Like, he cannot walk. So he can't defend himself in any nature of, of the bottom parts. So the dad is worried. He goes to check on his son at, at Daniel's house. The dad gets there, walk around the house, looking for his son. Son is nowhere to be found. He's thinking maybe he left. The dad decides to walk in the basement. And there he finds his son, y'all, bloody, lifeless, beat to death. He immediately calls 911 as he's sulking and crying. It's sad. He calls 911. You know, five, ten minutes later, the police show up. You know, and they pronounce him dead. The dad is devastated, as he should be. There's no one else in the house, but the dad knows his house because they were all, well, his son were friends with these people. The police look up whose house it belongs to, and it's like, hey, this belongs to Daniel Flores. So, Daniel. <clears throat> They put on a media search for Daniel and the dad's like, hold on, wait a minute. It's not just Daniel that lives here. It's his girlfriend and their kids, his girlfriend Kayla. And they also have three kids to, or five kids that live here. So the police put out a manhunt for them. They're nowhere to be found. They start calling around to their family members. Initially, none of the family members know where they are. They, never, they haven't heard from them. They don't know what's going on. So then Kayla's sister calls them. And tells the police that, um, hold on. Yeah, girl, I'm a bartender. Tells the police <laughs> that she has Kayla's kids. Kayla's dropped her kids off frantically. Like, she didn't tell her what's wrong, but she just told her that she didn't need her to care for them for a few hours. So she didn't question them because it's her nieces or nephews or whatever she had. However, she did not know where she was at. The police was happy to hear that. At least they know she was alive. Like, did he kill her too? Who these peppers is good. It's bacon wrapped stuff, jalapeno peppers. So now that they know she's still alive, they put out a man hurt for her too. They're nowhere to be found in Columbus. Days go by, and they're still searching. No, no sign of them. A couple days, a few days later, a ping on their cell phones come up in Youngstown, Ohio. Now, this began in, I don't know if I said this already, Columbus, Ohio, but a ping on their cell phones come up in Youngstown, Ohio at a motel. So they immediately notify Youngstown police. Youngstown surrounds the motel, sees Daniel and Kayla walking to their car, and... They immediately arrest them. You know, they got their hands up like, okay. So, they take them back to the station. 
Daniel has a smug look on his face like, hmm, you're not going to catch me like he ain't did nothing wrong or whatever, I guess. And Kayla is scared. She's crying because this is not the type of life she lives. As she should. So, <clears throat> they take him in separate areas, separate areas questioning them. Daniel didn't give up any information. He was just sitting there, <clears throat> arm crossed, arms crossed. I'm not giving you anything. He's not telling them anything. And then they try to throw Kayla in his face. Like, okay, well, maybe if we throw her in the realm of things, maybe he'll start snitching. No. Daniel was like, hmm. And then they start telling him, like, oh, we got fingerprints from the from your house or the basement, which we have blood splatter everywhere. And we also have fingerprints that belong to you and D. So we know you were there. Daniel was not saying a word. So the police give up on him. They go talk to Kayla. Kayla immediately, immediately starts crying. Because they show her evidence. You know, the blood and all that. She's sad about it. So she goes on to tell police what happened, y'all. This is the crazy part. Remember I told you she took the money from him. And then he started beating her up continuously. So I guess the night before that, she questioned him about something. He hit her in the face. He hit her so hard that he split her lip and knocked her tooth out. So Kayla, Kayla said she took some muscle relaxers and just went to sleep. Just to, I guess, take the pain away. Not trying to leave or nothing. That night, the night before this happened. So the next morning she wakes up because she hears noise. She wakes up to take her kids to school. She comes back, goes, lays down. She was still feeling groggy from the medication. I guess she took a mus muscle relaxer. It must have been strong. She was feeling groggy. She went back to sleep. However, a few hours later, she started hearing screams and yells for help. So she walked out to see what's going on. It's Daniel out there beating these ass. Like, with a hammer. He got a hammer in his hand and he just beating the crap out of this poor guy. I told you the guy's in a wheelchair. Like, and they were supposed to be friends. Just beating the crap out of this guy. And he called for help. Help me. He see Kayla walking. Help me. Help me. She's yelling at Daniel. Dan. At, and Daniel telling him to stop, you know, what are you doing? She thinking she tripping, like maybe it's the medication, but no, this guy's really yelling for help. And eventually, D just starts yelling here, take it. Take whatever you want, because Daniel started saying, he ripped me off, he ripped me off. So she said she's seen D throw the dope out of his pocket, like here, take it off. Have it, just take it. Daniel was so far gone, he stops beating him up, picks up the crack. The dope, whatever you want to call it. Goes to his basement area or wherever he smokes his little drugs at. Gets high for a little while, half hour or so. <clears throat> that whole time, Kayla is trying to confront, I'm um, trying to console D. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. He telling her, D was telling Kayla, he lost his mind. He not himself. He, he didn't go on crazy. She's like, I know. Like, she know, but. Like I said, this is man is in a wheelchair and he's half beat, so she can't really do much for him. He probably was too heavy to pick her up. Too heavy for him, for her to pick up. While they're talking and she just consulting him, you know, rubbing him, telling, her, telling him she's sorry when I hear comes. Daniel back upstairs, picks the hammer up again and starts beating him over and over again until he basically kills them. During all this time, Kenna decides... You know, she's asking him, like, what are you doing? Please stop. She thinking she's tripping because she's still kind of groggy from that medication. She ends up leaving to go pick up her kids from school. Now this. She picked her kids up from school. Took them to her sister house. Dropped them off at her sister house. That's how her sister got the kids. Kayla went back to this house where Daniel was beating this man to death. She went back to this house in a store. She said she don't know why she did it. Baby, I don't know why you did it either. Ain't no way no medication gonna make you go back to a murder scene and do what you about to do. So she went back to the house. She walks in, Daniel sitting around, smiling, acting like nothing happened. You know, he out of his mind right now. Smiling like nothing happened. She sees cleaning supplies. So she thought maybe she was tripping. Like, okay, I don't see any blood. I don't see, I don't see D here. Maybe I was tripping. But then she sees those cleaning supplies, and Daniel sees her staring at him, staring at the cleaning supplies. Then she starts to see 
his wheelchair. She's like, oh, he got to still be here because his wheelchair is here. She's not saying this. This is what she's thinking. It's just his blood spatter. Daniel tells her, clean it up. What? Tells her to clean it up. Do y'all know this girl got down on her knees and start scrubbing the blood? And cleaning up this murder scene, baby, first of all, I wouldn't have went back. If you gave me the chance to leave, I'm calling the cops, picking up my kids, and I'm getting the, the F out of town. But anyway, she went back. Do y'all know this girl started scrubbing the floor? Granted, she's probably scared that he was going to beat her ass, but why did you go back? So after she cleans up, he grabs her hand like, let me show you what's going on. He walks her down to the basement. And she sees blood all on the stairs, blood on the walls. And these body just laying on the ground, limp, dead, lifeless, full of blood. So, he's like, you going to help me clean this up? And she's just like, okay. So, she starts throwing bleach everywhere while he wraps the body in the tarp. Y'all. They didn't kill this man. He was like 27 years old. Well, I ain't gonna say that he did, but she took a part in it. So she brought her ass back. She ends up cleaning, cleaning up the mess that he made. And then he tells her, go upstairs and pack a bag. We about to go for a couple days. We gotta run. He did whatever he could to make her an accomplice, like make her clean up. She was she was a part of the crime. She packed a bag. She went upstairs to pack a bag. Another chance for her to run away. Baby, I would have flew out that front. I wouldn't have went back, but if I did, I would have flew out that front door. Got in my car and took the hell off. But she did. She packed the bag. So they leave. Drive for hours, a couple hours. They end up in Youngstown at a little motel where they were captured. So they go to trial or whatever. It took a while. A few months for them to go to trial. They gave Kayla three years probation, y'all. No jail time because they said she was a victim of abuse. Which I understand it's hard to leave an abusive relationship. But she went back. Baby, was you smoking crack too? Because what on earth would make you go back? She had enough sense to pick her kids up from school and take them somewhere safe. But then you went back to this man that you just watched kill somebody. I don't understand it. I'll never understand it. I don't feel sorry for her. She should have got life. But she, that's a weak mind. But whatever. They end up giving her three years probation. Which was a slap in the face of the family as it should be. Because what do you mean? She literally helped clean this murder. And all she gets three years probation, no jail time. They end up giving, okay, so before they sentenced Daniel, there was a break in the case, or not a break, a complication in the case. Kayla did something to violate her probation, which determined her as not a justifiable witness because she broke her probation. I don't remember what she did. I don't even know if they said it. So she couldn't test, she had agreed to testify against Daniel, but because she violated Excuse me. Her probation, she could not do that. So, they deliberated in court because they lost a key witness to the to the crime scene, even though they saw everything that went on, even though she admitted it. They couldn't use her confession in court because she was not considered a justifiable witness anymore. Y'all, the law is crazy. They ended up giving Daniel... They charged him with manslaughter, robbery, and manslaughter, robbery, and assault, maybe. Abuse. He had a minimum of 11 years. She got three in probation. He had a minimum of 11 years, which means that's probably all he'll do because they did. he never admitted it. And they didn't have any key witness to the case anymore. That's a horrible feeling. That has to be a horrible feeling for the family. The law sucks. There's no way he should have got away with that shit. Then I tried to end a story with saying, oh, she's trying to get her life together now. She's no longer going to veterinary school. She's only focused on her kids. She's in therapy for, you know, all her abuse and anxiety and whatnot. Okay, good. I'm glad she's getting her life together. But why on earth did she only get three years probation? I do not feel sorry for her. You literally helped this man. You went back. She got away with murder. Even though she didn't physically beat him, she got away with murder. They call it um 
victim of abuse abuse what's that noise like okay what victim of abuse didn't make her go back because if you're scared then leave you could have left call the police have him pick up immediately then you want to have nothing to be scared about but you decided to go back there's not that much love he must have been giving her some devil dick. I don't know. There's not no much that much love or D in the world that's going to make me be an accomplice to murder. Baby, you are on your own, and I hope you go to jail. That's what I would have said to him. Because she went back, I don't feel sorry for her now. She would have cleaned up. If He would have made her clean up before, you know, she left or whatnot. She might have been scared. I would have understood that. But she left, came back. She then went upstairs, had another chance to run, did not leave. I don't feel sorry for her at all. Y'all, that story was so crazy because I just really feel like we got to start teaching women that it's not that much love in the world. Don't ever feel like you're less than enough to make a man make you do some shit like that because it's what? what? I don't get it. But that's not going on and on about how I feel about this. But, you know, whatever. I hope, I hope it haunts her every night. And I for sure hope it haunts him. You're sitting around being a crackhead killing people because of, you can't get on the pipe. Like, well, well, I don't understand people, man. But whatever. That's it, y'all. That's the end of this. I'm about to smash this food because it's so good. Too good to eat on camera. How I want to eat it. <laughs> but that's it. I hope you enjoy it. If you liked it, be sure to like the video, share it, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much, so much for watching. Cheers. Bye.